everyone. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. This is James. Let's talk Superman. Up, up, and away. It's no longer Henry Cavill. He is out of here. Well, he's not officially out. Look, the guy is the Witcher, probably Captain Britain. He's got, look, he's got paychecks coming in. He is good to go. However, he was the best Superman we've ever had. No disrespect to Christopher Reeves. You know, he was my childhood Superman, but Henry Cavill was the best Superman. He was the embodiment. He was so perfect. Anyway, whatever. Who cares? That's not what this is about. I want to know what you guys think of this, though, in the comments below because there's a lot of ways to look at what's going on over here. Um, anyway, it looks like this coach script is in. It has been submitted. The J.J. Abrams produced Superman film, which was at one point uh, described as a period piece, and then it was said it's not a period piece. And look, everything I'm saying, I know you guys are going to hate it, but take it with a grain of salt. Giant grain of salt. You've got to. I'm not, like, I'm not in the office when these things happen. You're not in the office, so this is all hearsay. I'm we gotta treat it as hearsay, but it's enough where people are discussing it and saying that it kinda, you know, goes hand in hand with what they're hearing, and so we've gotta talk about it a little bit. And this is from uh, Cherry Faluda on Twitter. Uh, this is everything they know about the Superman reboot. Again, this is not, not all confirmed. None of it's really confirmed, but some of it, you know, people are saying that this could be uh, legit. Um, and I'm gonna go into the Henry Cavill thing as I wrap this up. Originally intended to be a period piece, the final draft submitted by Coates recently is not a period piece. It's not about a black. Superman being a victim of racism. Rather, it uses Superman's alien heritage as a parallel to racism. They are, however, going through with colorblind casting. A Superman is heavily nerfed, being taken back to his golden age roots. He can no longer fly, but he can instead leap tall buildings in a single bound, which is a, when I was a kid, I grew up, I watched a lot of the uh, Max Fleischer Superman cartoons, and that's what it was, right? He could leap tall buildings in a single bound and but i always knew superman to fly and i never really questioned the two so you can make it work regardless uh he also lacks his heat vision frost breath and x-ray vision he's also described as moving at mach 7. they do have descriptions of the characters in in the script which gives away their races lois lane is written that with, with an asian actress in mind perry white is written as an african-american and jimmy olsen is described as freckled Redhead. The film is currently utilizing the Golden Age version of the Ultra Humanite as the main antagonist, although this may change. At no point in the story does he use the albino gorilla body, which is rather long, clocking in 165 pages. This may be to due to the fact that the film is being written as an awards contender rather than a regular superhero film. It portrays Superman as a champion of the oppressed. The government hates him, but the people love him. Uh, the film is a love letter to Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster's original comics. It also has a dedication to them. Pop Kent's character is based off Jerry Siegel. It actually has a de dedication to a lot of writers such as Jack Kirby, who serves as inspiration for Dan Turpin. And that's all they know for now. They say return when they have more info. Uh, so this is, um, you know, there's a lot here to take in. I think, you know, they, they're going with the, they're not going to, uh, I, I think they got a lot of flack. When they announced it was going to be a black Superman, I think they got a lot of flack, and so they're like, they'll, they'll, they'll cast colorblind, you know, they'll just get the right actor for the role. Um, I think the other roles, what they're doing, I mean, we've had, you know, the African-American Perry White, and they're definitely, Lawrence Fishburne is a freaking fantastic actor, so, you know, obviously that worked, and I have no issue with it, but they are, I mean, I don't know, is it just, maybe it's just me? But it looks like they're checking boxes, right? The diversity boxes. And it's like, whatever. I mean, you get the right person for it. It doesn't matter what race they are. You get the right person for the role. So that's where I stand on that. I could care less, frankly. I actually, I like Jenny Olsen. I thought Jenny Olsen worked better than Jimmy Olsen, especially in this day and age. Uh, here's here's why I want, I, the, the length of the film, 165 pages. So screenplays usually clock in between like 90 and 120. And this is 165. The Batman was probably 800,000 pages. And I know what they're trying to do and they want, you know, they want to be better at it. But the thing that the, here's the thing. The Batman was Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves didn't inherit a script. In fact, when he looked at Ben Affleck's script, he said, nah, not for me. And he did his own thing. And this now, you're having this without a director attached because they're saying J.J. Abrams isn't going to direct, he's just going to produce. I, I don't know, This it just it feels like this is a, it's a miss from the get-go. You're aiming for awards consideration. Again, a miss, a miss right away. You know, the Batman, I, look, I know the Bat, you, not everybody liked the Batman or loved the Batman, but, but the Batman is an excellent film and it's very well made and there's a lot of care in that film. And I don't think you can, I don't think, oh, well, maybe you can, but I don't think that's really arguable. Like, it is what it is. It's a great, 
I mean, it was a film that was made passionately by very talented people. I feel like if you want that for Superman, you've got to hire someone who is interested in, and passionate about Superman, and you start from there. You don't just hire a script and, and you know, and with the agenda of we're gonna win awards. It's gonna be about this political statement and that one. No, you've got to have someone who loves who loves the source material. And so I, I just feel like you're. St they t look. The Force Awakens started with the script from Michael Arndt from Toy Story, right? And then J.J. Abrams was hired. He came in and he's like, nah, my own script out. And that's what I'm saying here. Is this could this everything in this could be moot right now? I think a period piece for this golden age, a period piece would have been spectacular to see. And then it could stand on its own as its own thing. I don't think Henry Cavill's coming in. DCEU leaks on Twitter kind of said, nope, this is not Cavill. Cavill's out. They basically, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but that's kind of what I read. So it sounds like Cavill's out. Cavill wanted more money than Warner Brothers wouldn't to give him because Warner Brothers are stupid. And I don't blame Henry Cavill for not wanting to go back. He was put through hell. He should have been the face of the DCEU for almost 10 years now. And instead he was pushed to the side and, and he was never given the respect that he, for playing Superman. Look what Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man, right? He was never given that. He should have been somewhere around there. And he wasn't. And it, it, for me, I don't blame him for not even wanting to come back if he didn't want to come back. I don't know who you're going to get to play Superman. Please, everybody. Because you're going to piss people off when it's not Cavill. And if he's not as good as Cavill, that's going to piss even more people off. And I think if you, if you race swap Superman for the sake of race swapping Superman, you're going to piss even more people off. And not just, you know, I think, you know, various people are going to be upset for doing that. And now, if the right actor is race swap, that's one thing. But I think if you just do it for the sake of doing it, which this Hollywood seems to be doing that lately, I don't think it's going to work. I think you got to, you know, Superman is Superman. Find someone who wants to make damn Superman movie. Then you make a Superman. That's what you do. They're, they're basically, go this feels like a Sony movie. I mean, I love the Golden Age and all that. That's what I grew up on. I told that's what, that, those are my cartoons. When I grew up, I watched those things. I had a VHS tape. I probably still have it somewhere. Get the filmmaker on board. Then do it. But anyway, whatever. That, this is what we're hearing about Superman. It sounds like Henry Cavill's out. Golden Age sounds fantastic. I just feel like this is already going to be a miss. And look, if it's not, I, pff, dude, I'll be so happy. So happy if it's not but we won't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.